and spiritual gifts. Now, when Pastor Jay explained that to me, I asked him if he wanted the gifts wrapped, and he didn't answer me. So I figured, well, maybe he does. So, here goes. Spiritual gifts are what's got me around. I know we all got it. God made that happen. And I'll tell you what, I got a feeling. Some of you have the gift of healing. And it's settled, no controversy. Some of you have the gift of mercy. Now Cicero and Jay have a knack for vision. But many of you have the gift of teaching. And if you've got the gift of song, lift your voices to the Lord and you can't go wrong. Some of you take criticism when you perform evangelism. Now, faith is a wonderful and powerful gift. Keeps you on a narrow path, won't let you drift. And many of you are always given. That's what I call real Christian living. So whatever your gifts, God expects you to use them. Otherwise, you're liable to lose them. So if you're ready to use your gifts of the Spirit, say amen and let God hear it. Amen. All right. Some of you were paying attention. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, we all have gifts of the Spirit. And uh, let's take a look at what some of those gifts are. In uh, Romans, it points out that some of the gifts are encouragement, giving, and leadership, mercy being merciful to others, the gift of prophecy, the gift of service, of serving other people, and the gift of teaching. Now in Corinthians, other gifts are mentioned. Administration and discernment. The gift of healing. The gift of interpreting languages, speaking in tongues, and language themselves. Now people do speak in tongues. The gift of prophecy and of wisdom. Of being an apostle. Of having faith. Of helping other people. The gifts of knowledge, evangelism, and prophecy. And in 1 Peter, the gift of service and teaching. Both are mentioned again. So they would seem to be pretty important. And I mentioned two or three times each. So we recognize that God has in view each one of us with some spiritual gifts. Well, now, but in 2 Timothy, we are told to fan into a flame the gifts from God that are within each and every one of us. Now any athlete can tell you that if they exercise and practice their sport, they get better at it. They don't, they get worse. And any musician can tell you, if you practice your instrument and study, you'll get better. And if you don't, you're going to get worse. So we are told to fan into a flame the gifts of the Spirit that are given to us so they will get stronger and more powerful and we can use them more effectively for our Lord. Now in Matthew, Jesus said, to those who have, more will be given. But to those who have not, what little they have will be taken away. At first time I read that, I thought, well, that's kind of cruel. You're going to take a poor man and take away what Lily does now. But that's not what Jesus meant at all. No, Jesus explained what he meant in parables. And the first was a parable of the sower. And Jesus said, He who hears the word of the Lord but doesn't understand it, well, then the wicked one, and we all know who that is, will come and take what is in his heart away. And those who receive the seed, the word of God, when the seed falls in a stony place, they receive it joyfully, but they don't get it rooted deep within themselves, and it eventually will fade and disappear. When the seed, the word of God, falls among thorns, the hearer is happy about that, but then he is deceived in pursuit of riches. But he who receives 
the sea, the word of the Lord, and it falls in good ground, then, and only then, it will bear fruit and bring forth some 100, some 60, and some 30-fold. In other words, we are told to receive the seed, the word of the Lord, the gifts of the Spirit, and then to put them to use. Which reminds me, there was a couple that had been married several years, and their marriage just wasn't going real well. And one year, the husband gave his wife on her birthday a big marble tombstone. Now, she didn't know what to say. No, she didn't say anything. And next year, he didn't give her anything. And she was miffed. She said, you didn't give me anything for my birthday. And he said, well, I bought you an expensive gift last year, and you didn't even use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are expected to, to use our, our gifts. Now, let's look at the gift of giving. And I don't mean bargaining or looking for a quid pro quo quid pro quo, I can say that. I mean real giving. One of the best examples of giving I can think of occurred at the Naples Unity Church where I used to attend. One lady admired another lady's sweater. So the lady wearing the sweater took it off and gave it to her. She said, here, take it, it's yours. Well, how did most of us react if someone did that to us? We said, oh, no, I didn't mean that. Either. This lady, however, accepted the sweater and said, thank you. She knew that the lady giving it to her was giving it sincerely and because she really wanted to. Now, <clears throat> one of the most precious gifts there is is the gift of encouragement. You might have a friend, family member, a relative, an acquaintance, a co-worker who's going through some pretty tough times. And you know, a lot of times a pat on the back, a smile, a hug, some encouragement is all it takes to get that person over the hump. You uh, might remember the Walt Disney movie, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, the one with the great big ears that everybody made fun of. One morning, Dumbo woke up in a tree. And he didn't know how he got there. And the bird said, we well, flew up here. Dumbo said, no, 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 no. No, I, I can't fly. And they said, sure you can. And they said, here, take this magic feather. Hold it in your trunk. And you will be able to fly. So Dumbo took the feather. And with their encouragement, hopped off the tree branch and flew around. And he became the star of the circus, Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Now obviously the feather had absolutely nothing to do with Dumbo being able to fly. It was the encouragement he got from his friends and the feeling that gave him deep inside that enabled him to do it. Maybe you know someone who was going through some bad times and could use some encouragement. And maybe you can be the one to help them fly high. You know, friends, the gift of giving is not conditional. And uh, it's not done with anticipation of reward or recognition. We uh, can serve God in many other ways. In Matthew, Jesus said, Many who are first shall be last, and many who are last shall be first in heaven. His point is those who are subservient on earth may be exalted in heaven, but those who are exalted on earth, especially those who exalt themselves, may take a lower rung in heaven. You see, the gift of serving is not conditional. And it's not done in anticipation of reward or recognition. You may recall in Luke, Jesus told the story of the Pharisee who stood in the public square and said in a loud voice, Thank you, God, that I am not like other men. I fast twice a week. I tithe. 
make sure everybody in the whole area heard him. Well, over to the side, there was a publican who prayed very quietly. He said, forgive me, God, and he beat his chest. He said, forgive me, Lord, I am a sinner. It was a private conversation with him and God. And Jesus said, this man went home justified, but not the other one. Those who exalt themselves will be abased in heaven, but those who humble themselves shall be exalted in heaven. There's many ways to serve. You can drive people who are not capable of driving to a doctor's appointment to the store, or just take them for a drive. You can get into food preparation, and prepare meals for other people, whatever. We have many in our congregation who are very service-minded, including my dear wife, Ben, who is always going somewhere to do something for other people. Um, very dedicated young lady. Then there is Brother Tom, who at this moment is uh, repairing <laughs> my pickup truck. And with running mine, it just wouldn't stop. I blew out the brake lights. Uh, that's above my pay grade to do that. So Tom is graciously preparing it for me. And then we have Brother Dennis. Deacon Dennis. Who will do anything for anybody at any time. And all he has to do is see that he's doing it. You don't have to ask him. He just does it. So he's always helping others. And you know, as always, Jesus led by example. You will recall that on the night of the Last Supper, he washed all the disciples' feet, even though they objected to it. He was showing them and us the way to truly service others. You imagine that TV show, Undercover Boss, they walked in. Who would you pick out to be boss in that picture? Certainly not Jesus. He was washing the other disciples' feet, but he was the boss. Now, you may have figured this out for yourself, but that is a pastor ball. And in my hands, it's probably worth $20, $25, I don't know. A button you put it in the hands of the giant from Fresh Look, Indiana, Larry Bird. And it turned out to be worth millions of dollars. He led the balls and Celtics to many championships. He truly exercised his gift of athleticism. Now, that is a football. And in my hand, it's probably worth $50 to $20. But you put that in the hands of Tom Brady, it could be worth upwards of a billion dollars. Yeah, he led the Patriots to six Super Bowl championships. He has six Super Bowl rings. Truly really amazing. He really exercised his character that once. Now, here we have two fish and five loaves. That would be someone for my wife and I. Maybe Mark II would be giving the heads. Those are his favorite part. But you put those two fish and five loaves in the hands of Jesus, and he held them up and blessed them, and they fed thousands of people with baskets of food left over. Now, here we have four nails. With those and some wood, I could probably build you a birdhouse. But when those four nails were pounded through the hands and feet of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they provided the greatest gift that the world has ever known. The greatest gift of all, eternal salvation. So, Christ gave us the greatest gift known to man. And the Spirit has given us gifts that He expects us to use. So take an inventory of your blessings, of your gifts, and put them to use in the service of our Lord, who gave the greatest gift imaginable to us, the gift of eternal life. Thank you for your kind attention.